Good morning, dear children of the Most High. I will thank God for the privilege he has again given to us to hear and listen to his word and as well the privilege he has given to me to share with you in today's devotion on day three, still under the theme mind, character and personality that comprises of a Christian life. We need a perfect life. We need to live with the mind of Christ. We need to have that personality that Christ wants us to find us with, and then he takes us home. Ah, as we are under the memory text from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 21, that says that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I pray each and every person who is listening to this message to like and subscribe that this message may reach to each and every person all over the world, and thence our Lord Jesus Christ, soon, soon second return, will come nearer and realer and as well as sooner. Uh, today's devotion, day three, is entitled The Power of Grace. Yesterday, we learned about the slavery of sin, how a person is entangled in sin today, then again and again without getting victory over sin. And when we acknowledge that the power of sin is stronger than us, then the power of God will come and take over the reign, the sovereignty of sin, and then righteousness will be accounted unto us. Shall we pray? Our dear Lord, we thank you for the privilege you've given us once more this morning. We pray that may your Holy Spirit come and speak to us. For this we pray, believing and trusting in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Though there is power of sin, there is slavery of sin, there is also the power of grace. There is power in grace as certainly as there is power in sin. And there is much more power in grace than there is in sin. That is the merit that each and every Christian has in this Christian journey. There is much more power in grace than there is in sin. Romans chapter 5, verse 20, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. We have found that there is power in sin to reign <clears throat> over man and hold him under its dominion. And just as certainly there is power in grace to reign over sin and hold man under the dominion of grace against all the power of sin. For where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin has reigned, even so might grace reign. The word reign here, applied to grace, is the same word precisely that is applied to sin as we learned yesterday. It means as to grace precisely what it means as to sin. Rain is just as true when referring to grace as when applied to sin. Yesterday we learned that reigning is to hold and exercise power, to exercise a commanding influence over something, to have a dominion over something, to, to the exclusion of something else. All this is true of grace as certainly as it is true of sin. As certainly as sin holds and exercises sovereign power and prevails irresistibly to the exclusion of everything else where it reigns, so certainly grace will hold and exercise sovereign power. As sin has reigned, even so might grace reign. As and even so, think of these expressions. As and even so. What do these words mean? They have no any other meaning 
than as just as. They have no other meaning to the same extent or degree in the same way like even as just as. Like as sin has reigned, just as sin has reigned, to just that same degree it is intended that grace shall reign and to that same degree grace will reign wherever it is allowed to do so. Friends, the Lord wants men to be absolutely free from sin and to be the servants of righteousness. But this cannot be so long as men fail fully to recognize the power and reign of sin. Therefore, he tells men over and over and always insists that of themselves they have no power at all against sin that they are slaves to a power which keeps them from doing the good that they would and compels them to do the evil which they hate. My dear friends, I want us to understand this fact. This the Lord tells to men because it is all true and he wants men to believe what he tells them as to the power and reign of sin so that they may know the power and reign of grace. For grace is to reign as fully as ever sin did. The power of sin is to be so broken that the slave is free and no more serves sin. Are you getting me, my dear friends? The power of sin in you it has to be broken down that the slave is sin, that you be free forevermore and no more being a servant to sin. Paul says in the, in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 6 that knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve him. Men have served sin. They do serve sin, but God has provided that henceforth they shall not serve sin, that they shall be free from sin and the servants of righteousness only, as formerly they were free from righteousness and the servants of sin only. Romans chapter 6 verse 14, it tells us that for sin shall have no dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So, it is, it is perfectly plain that to obtain the reign of grace in our behalf, it is essential that we confess the reign of sin. To know the power of grace, it is essential to confess the power of sin and to ensure the continued power and reign of grace, to ensure the continued supply of of the grace power in us, it is essential that there be a continued confession of the power of sin. Dear friends, I want us to say this once more, that to ensure the absolute reign of grace, it is essential that we continually confess our absolute weakness and helplessness in the presence of the power of sin to confess that in us dwells to confess that in us dwells no good thing and when you confess that that there is nothing in you that is good then you are tending to the line of righteousness we have no confidence in our flesh you have no confidence in your flesh then the way is clear for grace to manifest itself once more, when you have no confidence in your flesh, then you've made a clear way for grace to manifest itself. And there being nothing to hinder the power of grace, its reign will be complete. You let the grace of God reign in you. You let the weakness that is in you to, for you to acknowledge that you are weak, 
then the grace of God will come and reign in you complete. We are constantly to confess our weaknesses, our absolute helplessness, but we are not to deplore it. Just here is where many miss the right way, is where many miss the mark. They do feel their weaknesses, they confess that they do, but they do this only to deploy it and fairly to work themselves into discouragement and even despair over it. This is all wrong. This is to take the wrong road entirely. It is right, yes, it is essential that we confess always our weakness and absolute helplessness. This is the key of the whole situation. But instead of deploying it, thank God for it. Because for Christ says, my grace is sufficient for you and me. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Instead of being discouraged by your weakness, glory in it. For it is written, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So long as we feel that we have any strength to cope with sin, we depend upon this instead of upon grace. And so we are defeated. We depend upon ourselves instead of upon the Lord. And so definitely we fail. But when we constantly confess our absolute weakness and recognize the fixed fact that there is no power, no help, no good thing in us against the power of sin, then we shall depend wholly upon the Lord. All our hope will be in that grace that is sufficient for us to be made righteous. And the way being thus fully opened and held and hindered to the work of grace, grace will fully occupy the place and will reign against all the power of sin. And then sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Thus it is that when I am weak, then am I strong. It is only when we are weak that we can possibly be strong. There is no way we can be righteous when we have not been a sinner. It is only when we are weak that we can possibly be strong. No Christian wants to feel any other way than weak because then he knows that the way is open for grace to reign and thus when he is weak, then he is strong. Strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When you feel strong, you are certainly weak. For strength is not of yourself that you can feel it, but of the Lord that you may believe it. When you feel strong, you think you can stand. But let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. But when you feel weak and you know that you cannot stand, then he shall be held up, for God is able to make him stand. Thank the Lord that you do feel your weakness, and even then believe that your weakness is greater than you feel. And then believe in the Lord's strength for you, and in his abiding grace to impart this strength to your life, and reign there over all the power of sin, reigning through righteousness and to eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Then, as it is the truth of God that as sin has reigned, even so might grace reign. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are under the law. Then, under the reign of Christ, I mean, under the reign of grace, it will be found just as easy to do right as under the reign of sin, it was easy to do wrong. Then it will be found indeed that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless us all. And may you continue to share this message to each and every person that all we may obtain the blessings of the Lord. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen.